Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane Batman Classic TV Series Retro 1966 Adam West Batman TV Show, The Penguin. The Penguin was played by Burgess Meredith. This entire line is a Target exclusive, at least in the U.S. Shout out to my boy Corey for finding this for me at a Target store. But I've seen The Penguin at least one time since then. He's part of the third assortment of 1966 Batman figures. This is what will include Catwoman, Penguin, Batman in boxing gloves, and the Riddler in boxing gloves, although I've not seen the other three yet. So let's go and check out the packaging. As you can see, DC, McFarlane Toys, ages 12 plus, Batman Classic TV Series. Here is the Penguin. No traditional accessories, but he does come with a couple of action bubble effects. That was something the show was totally known for. The back side, you can see Batman Robin the Batman Bee on the Batcave. Here is the Penguin. And here's his barcode in case that helps anybody. So without further ado, let's open him up. Of course, I did get two of these figures. One of which to open and enjoy. I wanted to keep unopened in my complete unopened 6 and 7 inch Batman Action Bear Collection. Here's this McFarlane 1966 Penguin. Next to the Mattel 1966 Penguin. In this video, we'll definitely check out which one is better. Here's my entire collection of McFarlane 1966 Batman Classic TV Series figures. I have everything so far, although I need to complete the third assortment with Catwoman, Batman with boxing gloves, and the Riddler with boxing gloves. And then the rumor is, the next assortment, it's going to be some sort of San Diego Comic Con exclusive Catwoman. I'm assuming that's going to be a Julie Newmar Catwoman, since we already have the Eartha Kit version. And then it's also going to have Batman and Robin in black and white. I assume because a lot of households still had black and white TVs back then. All right, now that we have this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He doesn't come with any traditional accessories, but he has these two action style bubbles that the show was known for. Now it would be very nice if this guy came with a cigar or an umbrella, but really none of McFarlane's 1966 figures have come with any traditional accessories. Definitely a little bit disappointing. I totally understand Warner Brothers would probably not allow him to come with a cigarette this day and age, but an umbrella, it would have been nice. But before we look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So my first thoughts, this guy's a little bit small, but the entire line is a six inch scale. Very disappointed that they didn't go with a 7 inch scale for these figures. I wish they would fit in with the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. But it is what it is. Still very happy to collect these guys. So let's take a look at them. Here's Penguin. He's got his purple sort of top hat. You can see the monocle. Nose pretty long. Signature eyebrows. Smiling face. Face looks pretty good. I can definitely sort of see the Bridges Meredith likeness, but something's a little bit off. He's got a purple bow tie, traditional penguin outfit. He's shaped and looks like a penguin. Not quite as fat as I expected, but Burgess Meredith wasn't some giant guy. He's got one big old gripping hand with nothing to grip and one fisted hand. Dress shoes, a little tail to his jacket. He's in that old school signature penguin look from that era and just a closer look at his face and head sculpt a lot of work went into this guy you can see a lot of sculpting detail around his smile his brow his monocle and his cheeks now this figure screams 1966 penguin but something's a little bit off on the burgess meredith likeness Now let's take a look at his accessories. A little bit disappointed there, but he wouldn't match the rest of the line if he actually came with anything interesting. We have two of these action bubble effects. One, kapow. It can sort of latch around his wrist. And the other one here is pow. Nice little punching sounds. Signature for the TV show, and they're interchangeable between each of the figures. Here are all the action bubble effects that have accumulated from McFarland's Batman classic TV series line, and I'm not even fully caught up. 
Here's Penguin punching the Batman. A big action bubble saying pow next to his face. And like I said before, these accessories are interchangeable between each of the characters. Here's Batman and Robin, both punching the Penguin. Kapow! Pow! Another accessory it would be nice if it came with would be an umbrella. This is the umbrella that came with the Mattel 1966 Penguin. Now he has this very large gripping hand, so he can only hold it where the umbrella gets kind of large over here. You could also have him hanging over the side of his arm. Now a little disappointing that this guy didn't come with a gripping hand, so if you provide your own umbrella, it's going to be a struggle for him to hold it. It would also be nice if Penguin came with a cigarette or a cigar. I do understand in the modern day and age, Warner Brothers is not one action figures coming with that sort of stuff. But it would have been nice. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. And once again, I'm definitely disappointed that these are 6 inch scale and not 7 inch scale. In fact, these things are even a little bit smaller than the 6 inch scale. I know I'm beating this dead horse with a stick, but I'm going to keep doing that until the stick breaks. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 6.0 inches tall, which can translate to about 15 centimeters. And if you think he's 6.0 to the top of his head, the top of his head would be a little bit smaller. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side. It's on a ball joint. You can look up and down a little bit. Can tilt just a tiny little bit there. Pretty good range of motion at least for a basic figure like this. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes out a good 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. No bicep cut, single jointed elbows, go in about 90 degrees, they have rotation as well. His wrists can rotate around. He's got no articulation, his torso it's one solid piece. Traditional waist swivel, hidden very nicely under his shirt. His legs, Old school T crotch, you go forward about that far. Back, not too much. Single jointed knees, go back less than 90 degrees. They have rotation as well. Then his ankle here, absolutely nothing going on there. Here's Penguin walking down the street, being caught with a spotlight, just like in the opening from the 1966 film. Now let's check him out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some of the McFarlane 1966 Retro Batman Classic TV Series figures. Here he is, next to the Adam West Batman and Burt Ward Robin. Then, next to the Cesar Romero Joker and the Frank Gorshin Riddler. Once I get Catwoman, all of the entire team from the 1966 Batman film. Really hope they make some more villains. The most obvious would be Mr. Freeze and Mad Hatter. But I hope they make stuff like King Tut, Egghead, and Bookworm. Those are on the top of my want list from this line. To my knowledge, I don't know about a Platinum Chase variant in this wave. It would make perfect sense to make a Penguin with a Domino Mask, or an Unmasked Catwoman. I guess time will tell. Here are all the figures I have from McFarlane's retro Batman Classic TV series line. Still need to track down Catwoman, and Batman and Riddler are the boxing gloves. Although I don't see any of the boxing glove figures on eBay yet, so I don't think they've hit stores. And like I said at the beginning, rumor is the next wave is going to be a San Diego Comic Con exclusive Catwoman, presumably a different actress, and then black and white versions of Batman and Robin. Now let's check them out next to some of the Mattel 1966 Batman figures. Here he is, next to Mattel's version of the Penguin. They're scaled up pretty similar, but the McFarlane ones scale a tiny bit smaller, and that disappoints me. They have the same features, same outfit, although you can see the Mattel one actually has that large cigarette. I don't know which one I like better. I think it might be the Mattel version, just because he's more articulated. There are pros and cons to both versions. The Mattel one has the umbrella and the cigarette but the cigarette is stuck in his mouth. Sure, I could probably cut it out, and then maybe even give it to the McFarland figure, but I bet it'd look pretty weird where I cut the cigarette out. Here's a close look at both their faces. 
drop me a line in the comments below. Which one do you guys think is better? McFarlane on the left or Mattel on the right? Now there are pros and cons to both faces. I think the McFarlane one. The sculpt is pretty nice. But it looks a little bit scary. A little bit scary than Bridges Meredith how they looked. It's a little bit off. And the one on the right. It's a little bit too soft. But with that cigarette. It really just screams Penguin for the TV show. Here's Penguin. Next to Mattel's classic Batman and Robin. The two lines do scale pretty good together. And here he is. With the other villains by Mattel. Joker, Riddler, and Catwoman. He does fit in okay, but as you can see, the McFarlane figures are a little bit smaller. Here's the Penguin, next to several different Batman figures from McFarlane's DC Multiverse line. These are all from the comics. You can just see the big scale difference between the two. It's probably a good inch and a half scale difference. And here he is, next to some more McFarlane Batman figures. These are from different various forms of media. Now I've said it more than once in this video, but I really wish these 1966 figures were part of McFarlane's DC Multiverse line. Or even if they were an offshoot in a separate line, wish they were still 7 inch scale so you could mix them all in together. Now let's check them out, next to some other Penguin figures. Here are both the McFarlane Penguin figures they've made so far. We have the first live action version of the Penguin, and the most recent version from The Batman, played by Colin Farrell. Then. Next to some DST, or Diamond Select Toys, Penguin figures from Gotham. Another live action version of Penguin. And here he is, with my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Penguin figures. I can think of at least three that I'm missing from that company. And now, next to a Yamato Penguin. Then, next to all my different Mattel Penguin figures. And here he is, next to an older Kenner Penguin figure. Here are all the different live action versions of the Penguin. We have Penguin from the 1966 TV show, from Batman Returns, from the TV show Gotham, and from the recently released The Batman. Here's my entire collection of Penguin action figures, and I sure don't have them all. Here's Penguin, next to a couple of action figures I used to substitute for the Kabuki twins. They were some of his henchmen in the cartoon The Batman. Here's his Penguin. Next to a bunch of different penguin thugs or henchmen that I have. They don't fit in with him, scale or style wise. They're more so based off his thugs from the Arkham franchise. Here's this McFarland penguin, next to an army of actual penguins, similar to Batman Returns. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in both scale and style wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7 inch scale. But this guy is a much smaller, slightly less than 6 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of these smaller action figure lines I collect and work way larger. Here he is with some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. And here he is next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. Then next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is next to some Mafex figures. Then next to some Mattel. DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 Collective figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW Wrestling figures. Then, with some Mattel Wrestling figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And now, next to some of his McFarland brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines. All from McFarlane Toys. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select Toys. And finally, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. Overall, it's a pretty nice Penguin figure. I would say it's in the upper portion of McFarlane's 1966 figures. Can't wait to get Catwin to round out the villains. The guy's sculpt is really nice. Paint job is excellent. Just something a little off about his face. His accessories, frankly they suck. His articulation, eh, it's mediocre at best. I do get this is supposed to be a retro line, not supposed to have the modern articulation and scale, but I really wish it did have those things. That being said, if I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. If it was a 7 inch scale figure just like this, 
I'd probably give him a 7.5 or an 8. Very happy to check this guy off my list. Happy to add him to my Penguin collection. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll talk to you guys real soon.